the number three House Democrat, Congressman James Clyburn of South Carolina, is stepping into the Ohio congressional race. Yesterday, Clyburn endorsed Chantel Brown, the leading opponent of Nina Turner, an outspoken ally of Bernie Sanders and a current frontrunner in the race. All right, so I wanted to get into this back and forth exchange or interview, I should be more specific, that took place between Brianna Joy Gray as well as The Hill Rising in terms of discussing Nina Turner and or Nina Turner currently running for member of the House in terms of her race within the context of Cleveland, Ohio, where recently not only Hillary Clinton but now Jim Clyburn has also endorsed Nina Turner's essential rival, if not individual, running against her in terms of Chantal Brown. Chantal Brown now aligning herself with the establishment in terms of not only the Hillary Clinton endorsement, but now with the Jim Clyburn endorsement. Now, that's a very important point to be had there. Jim Clyburn, not only Hillary Clinton, have long represented the Democratic Party in terms of its centrist approach, in terms of specific policy. But now, especially within the context of a sort of post-2016 Democratic primaries world with Bernie Sanders gaining nationality and or visibility tied to center and according to the left policy initiatives, going against the centrist, if not traditional establishment wing of the Democratic Party, which consists of individuals like Clinton in the past, which have consisted and do consist of individuals in the current context, such as the Clyburns, let alone the Klobuchar's, let alone the Pete Buttigieg's, and so on and so forth, and even the Cory Booker's, and even the Kamala Harris's. But now, that establishment wing, especially within the context of a post-2016 primaries world, challenging that power structure in terms of advocating for certain and according to the left position in terms of expanding Medicare, in terms of federal minimum wage $15, in terms of expanding public education, in terms of also dealing with environmental issues in a more sort of Green New Deal resolution approaches that should be looked to get discussed, let alone look to be tied to policy in terms of such things such as a federal jobs guarantee. Those perspectives and or viewpoint are essentially rivaling against the centrist establishment wing, which in certain cases aligns more with the center-right Republicans as opposed to aligning themselves with the center and a quarter to the left Bernie Sanders wing of the Democratic Party. And we're seeing that play out not only within the context of infrastructure where we find Biden sort of moving center to the right, but then sort of trying to move back a center and a quarter to the left, but then still remaining center and about quarter to the right. So once again, not really favoring the center and a quarter to the left policy initiatives, such as in terms of infrastructure. The paradoxes are found within the context of the Democratic Party in terms of which way they should go. And what we're seeing is individuals such as Jim Clyburn, that in many ways is celebrated by the establishment, aligning not with an individual that is firmly rooted in progressive policies such as the specific issues as it pertains to health care outcomes that disproportionately impact individuals such as in Jim Clyburn, South Carolina state where blacks have worse health care outcomes in terms of not only accessibility but also in terms of outcomes that Brianna Joy Gray goes into within the context of the interview and her exchange. All those things are a reality, but despite supporting the individual that's advocating for the expansion of Medicare, he aligns with the sort of center, if not centrist, if not center, and leaning towards the right individual, such as Chantel Brown, who's of course running against Nina Turner. Aligns with Brown as opposed to Turner, even though Turner's advocating for the expansion of Medicare. Clyburn can't take that approach. His whole career, if not majority of his career, represented by money coming from Big Pharma. Therefore, chooses that position as opposed to the reality and or correct position, such as supporting Turner, which of course would have 
monumental outcomes within the context of his state alone in terms of especially disproportionately the black population instead chooses to align with the establishment candidate reason being his ties to big pharma affecting his decision making those are some of the issues that Brianna Joy Gray goes into within the context of the establishment and in terms of how the establishment will consistently align themselves with centrist, if not centrist, leaning towards the right, as opposed to ever aligning with the center and according to the left individuals that may be advocating for some of the policies, such as Medicare for All, that Bernie Sanders made national and or visible within the context of his 2016 emergence in terms of the primaries. Reason being, big money gets in the way and impacts the decision making and we're seeing it in terms of Clinton aligning who has her own issues with Nina Turner as well as now Jim Clyburn also aligning with the individual Chantal Brown running against Nina Turner. Important point to be made support Nina Turner, provide funding to Nina Turner so she could get within the context of Congress and push for some of these policy initiatives, expanding Medicare, raising federal minimum wage, dealing with environmental issues, let alone various other issues in terms of private prisons transitioning to the public sector, let alone issues in terms of a more diplomacy-based approach in terms of foreign policy, let alone with dealing with issues within the context of the community of Cleveland, Ohio, and her district exclusively in terms of funding for specific parks, recreations, after school programs. All these things matter within the context of the local and or state, let alone at the national level. All policies are crucial and or important. And Bri Brianna, we actually have numbers that, ju that just came in that, that make your point. Dave Weidel at the Washington Post is reporting that after Hillary's endorsement, she, as we know, she raised more than $100,000 overnight. After James Clyburn's endorsement, again, more than $100,000. And so that's $200,000 pumped into Nina Turner's campaign by Clinton and Clyburn. The question is, what, what value uh, do those endorsements have for Chantal Brown? And, and, and I ask that because, as, as you recall, Elliot Engel got the endorsement of uh, Hillary Clinton and a whole slew of establishment Democrats uh, in, in the final few weeks of, of that race, Jamal Bowman is now representing that district and won it in a landslide. Hmm. Well, it's clear when you read reporting like the New York Times article about this recently that the goal is to show that all of the familiar names in the Democratic Party, the household names that you know and trust, are behind Chantel Brown. And moreover, the way that the Clyburn endorsement is being framed in particular is seemingly a little bit of a nod to a certain level of identity politics, which is interesting given that both candidates in this race are black and that Senator Turner has gotten so many endorsements from notable black public figures, including black and brown public figures, including all the members of the squad. Um, and so it's really curious to start to look closely at why it is that people like Jim Clyburn regularly are deployed to kind of run cover for establishment candidates. None of us can forget what happened in the Democratic primary where Clyburn coming out in favor of Joe Biden at the last minute really helped to swing South Carolina for Joe Biden, who up until that point had won zero states and was really flagging as a candidate. And so one has to start to ask the question, what are Jim Clyburn's motives here to get in the middle of, of these races over and over again. And you can't escape the fact that Jim Clyburn has taken more money from the pharmaceutical industry over the last 10 years than anybody else in Congress. Um, he comes from a state that has some of the worst health outcomes in the country. I believe it ranks number 44. It's the number two state in terms of me medical debt with almost 38%, uh, uh, sorry, 32% of uh, South Carolinians having medical debt. Um, some of the worst outcomes in terms of uh, maternal health, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And these things are connected. And the idea that someone from a state like South Carolina that has Republican leadership, that is a red state that didn't get Medicare expansion, right, that didn't accept Medicare expansion, would be working so hard against people who are working for a federal solution to the health care crisis in his own state um, is really, frankly, 
unethical. I, I don't know. I don't know what other word to use there. 